are terminologies for beginners. Anti-lag. If these videos are helping, make sure you follow for more. Anti-lag is a feature that allows your car to hold boost while lifting off the throttle. Essentially, it stops turbo lag. Two-step. You can see two-step as a type of launch control. This allows you from a dead stop to get perfect RPM for optimal grip off the line. Car terminologies for beginners. Before explaining anti-lag, I have to simply break down a turbocharged car. In order for a turbo to work, exhaust gases have to flow to get the propeller inside spinning. The time it takes for the turbo to start spinning, also known as spooling, is called turbo lag. Depending on the size of your turbo, the time varies and briefly hinders performance in your car. Introducing anti-lag. An anti-lag system is used to prevent turbo lag and was introduced in the early rally racing days where drivers have to stay sharp and need instant torque. Essentially what happens is the anti-lag system uses fuel and exhaust gases to cause combustion due to high temperatures in the exhaust manifold. The extra force from the explosions keeps the turbocharger spooled even when the engine is slowing down. If none of that made sense to you, check the comments for definitions. Learning about cars for beginners. Brake horsepower versus wheel horsepower. Follow us to understand more about cars and tag or share it to someone that needs to learn. Brake horsepower is the measurement of horsepower that the engine produces before it makes it to the wheels. The way that this is calculated is on an engine dyno. Crank or brake horsepower is how most car companies rate their vehicles. But I'm not done yet! Wheel horsepower is how many car enthusiasts talk about their horsepower. Simply put, wheel horsepower is the horsepower measured to the wheels. There is loss of power from the engine to the wheels due to your drivetrain. This is normal and instead is measured on a car dyno. <laughs> For example, Ford advertises the 2015 Mustang GT at 435 horsepower, but owners are seeing stock numbers on a dyno at around 374 wheel horsepower. Follow to learn more quick facts about cars. Car Dictionary for Beginners, Part 4, Lowering Springs. Lowering springs are springs that go over your stock suspension. They're more affordable than coilovers and gives your car a more aggressive look and aids in handling. Coilovers. Coilovers is an adjustable suspension kit that you can replace your stock suspension for on your car. It's the most beneficial for handling, but most people just use it for lowering their car. Air suspension. Some cars and SUVs come stock with this, but a lot of people can upgrade their cars to have it as well. This allows the car to be lowered and raised at the touch of a button. Static. Static refers to a car that has suspension mods such as coilovers or lowering springs. This means the car is lowered and can't be lifted autonomously, like air suspension can. Static cars that have coilovers have to be manually adjusted. Lowering springs cannot be modified once installed. Car terminologies you need to know for beginners. Part 1. Tag your peoples because I know you want them to know this stuff. A cat pack. A cat pack is an exhaust that has been modified from the back of the car to the catalytic converter. Euro. Euro cars are cars from Europe i.e. BMW, Mercedes, Porsche, JDM. JDM stands for Japanese Domestic Market, or cars from Japan, like Nissan, Honda, or Subaru. Domestic. In America, this would mean American cars, like Dodge, Ford, and Chevy. Money shifting. Money shifting is shifting to a lower gear instead of a higher gear on accident, resulting in catastrophic engine and transmission failure. Zero to 60. 0 to 60 is the time it takes for your car to go from 0 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. The faster that time, the better. Car terminologies you need to know for beginners, part 3. Rep wheels. Rep wheels is a term used to refer to smaller, less expensive wheel companies that create similar designs to some of the more expensive companies. They get talked a lot, but tend to be the most common type of wheel out there. Box. Box is used to refer to a car that needs a lot of work, similar to being clapped out. FBO. FBO is the acronym for full bolt-on. When someone says they're full bolt-on, it usually means that their car has all the aftermarket modifications that they can install without opening the engine. These parts usually include intake, blow-off, exhaust, ignition coils, and more. Hooning. Hooning is a slang term for speeding, drifting, street racing, and all other forms of spirited driving. Gapple bees. With gapple bees, you're creating a large gap between you and your opponent, which will result in you winning by a landslide. Car terminologies for beginners, dyno, tuning, and ECUs. A dyno or a dynamometer is a treadmill-like device where you put your car on it to measure the horsepower and the torque. For context, when people mention a dyno, they're usually wanting to get the exact horsepower and torque for their car. Cars, over time, lose horsepower due to aging of the parts. But people also upgrade and tune their cars to make more horsepower than the car originally came with. Tuning can also be done on a dyno 
What is tuning? In layman's, your car has a computer in it that monitors and controls most electronics, called the ECU. An ECU, or engine control unit, keeps the engine working smoothly. A tuner, or the person doing the tuning, can go into the ECU and modify the car's software to make the car perform better. You can increase fuel efficiency or get more horsepower, amongst other things. I will leave definitions in the comments. Car terminologies for beginners. LS swap. An LS swap is when a car owner swaps the factory or stock engine from their car and puts in more freedom. This freedom is called an LS motor. An LS is a family of engines developed by Chevy. They are V8 engines that are practically everywhere and used to be dirt cheap. These engines, depending on the one you get, are good for a variety of different motorsports. LS engines are notorious in Corvettes and Camaros, just to name a few. Again, depending on the variant you get, modification potential is endless. Car terminologies you need to know for beginners. Part two, bags. Air suspension that raises and lowers the car. Boost. Boost is force induction, i.e. a turbo or a supercharger. But based on context, it could also mean how much pressure that force induction is making. For example, you might hear 13 pounds of boost. Camber. Camber is usually mentioned in relation to a car with too much negative camber, which makes the wheels tilt inward. A little bit of negative camber is beneficial for handling, but too much is actually really dangerous. CAI or cold air intake. This is a performance upgrade that allows cooler air into the engine. This replaces your stock air filter box. Car terminologies for beginners. Full bolt on. These parts usually include intake, exhaust, blow off valve, ignition coils, fuel injectors, and intake manifold. Each car may differ, so there may be more or less of these upgrades for you. Comment your car down below and someone can point you in the right direction. So you want to modify your car but don't know where to start. We're learning about cars for beginners and here are three starting upgrades to make your car more enjoyable on the road. Tires. Tires, as you should know, are most important when it comes to safety pushing your car's performance. Look into some performance tires that fit your car. Something like Michelin Pilot Sport tires could be a good starting point. Suspension. Yes, I know you guys want to go faster, but trust me on this one. Make sure your car can outperform the power that it currently has. Not only in the straight line, but in the corners as well. Suspension is a vital part of this, along with tires and this next upgrade. You can start with upgrading to lowering springs and spade wires, or go the more complex route with a coilover setup, like BC Racing coilovers. They're adjustable to the setup that you want. Brakes. These options are endless. You can do a simple drilled and slotted rotor upgrade to help with cooling and dissipate water, to upgrading with a big brake kit to aiding slowing down your car more efficiently. These three upgrades sets up a great basis for a well-balanced car. Next, we'll talk about horsepower upgrades and five cars that I think you can easily modify. Check out my profile for some dope merch. So you want to learn about Honda engines. Well, you stopped in the right place, my friend. K-series, B-series, D-series. What does that all mean? We're learning about cars for beginners. If these videos are helping you, smash that like button and follow to learn more about cars. D-series. Popular engine choice is a D16. These engines are a good base if you're on a small budget, but don't expect any high horsepower builds from this. B-Series. B-Series swap, if you don't already have one in your car, is the next step up, but it's gonna cost you a little bit more. K-Swaps are very popular, as well as being seen as the best, but it's also the most expensive of the three swaps. If you want me to go more into detail, swipe right. Car terminologies for beginners. Torque. I've been getting a lot of questions wondering what torque is and how it compares to horsepower. And if you're enjoying these videos and want to become an experienced driver, make sure you follow and comment your dream car. It can be a little confusing, so I'm going to try to simplify it the best I can. Torque. Torque can be seen as a rotational force, or the force that makes your wheels spin. This is also the force that puts you back in your seat, whereas horsepower is a measurement of the rate of force. Horsepower equals torque times RPM. RPM simply translates to revolutions per minute. Torque is a force that you can feel. Car terminologies for beginners, OEM and aftermarket. If these videos are helping you, show your support by getting a Drive Club tee or a hoodie. I'm Matt Rocker and this is Rocker's Drive Club. OEM is an acronym for Original Equipment Manufacturer. That pretty much means a stock or original part that came with the car. For example, your exhaust or even your taillights can be OEM, but you can also purchase OEM parts for your car. This is only if you want to replace something that originally came on the car, but it has to be of equal or better quality. Then, when you're ready to modify your car or put on better than stock parts, you will upgrade with aftermarket parts. Aftermarket is anything that is made third party. These can be cheap parts as well. Please remember, you get what you pay for in terms of quality. 
you're buying a new part that's usually expensive, but you found it cheap, there's most likely a reason why. This isn't always the case. You can get lucky and find some awesome parts for cheap via private sale. Our dictionary for beginners, Pro Charger. If you guys want to know what a word means, comment down below and also check out my link tree for a free game. Pro Charger is the name of a company that makes centrifugal superchargers. Centrifugal supercharger is very similar to turbochargers, but like a conventional supercharger, this type of force induction is belt driven, whereas a turbocharger is exhaust driven. Much like a turbo, this uses an impeller to compress and take air and force it into the engine. But rather than using the exhaust gases to get the impeller spinning, it uses a pulley connected to a belt. So the faster the engine is spinning, the more air will reach the cylinders. This allows these supercharged engines the most power at the highest RPM, unlike other superchargers. Learning about cars for beginners. Stage zero tune. While you look at these nuts, I want to thank you guys for being a part of Rocker's Drive Club. This series is for people that know little to nothing about cars. I know I can't please everyone and I may omit some stuff to help keep these videos easy to understand. Think of these videos kind of like a Cars 101 course. Lastly, if these videos are helping, please don't forget to follow and comment what car you're driving. Let's say you're getting a used car and you want to modify it for performance. Then the first thing you need to do is what's called a stage zero tune. This is something new car enthusiasts don't like to hear, but it could be the difference between making or breaking your car. A stage zero tune is getting your car as close to stock as possible, being that the parts on the cars may get worn over time. This could be as simple as a tune-up, such as the oil change, spark plugs, ignition coils, or wires, to more in-depth things like vacuum lines and hoses. Generally, anything that looks broken, fix it with either OEM or above OEM. This saves you time down the road when you're trying to figure out something that's not working properly. When it's done, you have a like new platform ready for upgrades. Can you guess in the comments what's the best first upgrade? Spoiler alert, it's not horsepower. And if you're new, welcome. And swipe right to check out the car dictionary. Car dictionary for beginners, takeovers. Takeover are events that have no place in the car community. Ever since COVID, this has been happening more and more throughout the country. The reason I started the Drivers Club, which the name is changing soon, was to bring knowledge to the newer people in the community. But it was also to show the cloud chasers that get a nice car, whether it's mommy and daddy's money or, or buy a Hellcat but can't afford the payments, that there's more to the car community than just speeding and doing donuts in the intersections and the highways. These people are not part of the community. Chances are they can barely drive. People like them are gonna make it illegal for people like us to enjoy our hobbies and our life. Say no to takeovers. Learning about cars for beginners. Tires. Some car owners just throw any kind of tire on their car and go about their day. But depending on the car and the kind of driving that you do, that mistake can make you hydroplane. Hydroplaning is when there's a layer of water between your tire and the road. This makes your car lose control if you panic or overreact. The simplest way to fix this is by slowing down. Fun fact, the grooves or squiggly lines on your tires are made to help water escape when it's raining. Tires, as I mentioned in my dictionary, are very important for your car. Depending on the type of driving that you do, here are the different types of tires and their benefits. Again, this is for cars. And if you're unsure, just check your owner's manual. For cars, there are five main types of tires. There's probably more, but those are not important right now. We have all season tires. All season tires are great for most situations. When it comes to driving on the road, they're the most comfortable and have decent traction. And they have decent handling as well. Don't expect to be any autocross times or anything with these tires though. They're good for rainy and dry services only. I would not recommend taking these tires off-road. All season tires usually have an S rating. That means if your car came with these tires from the factory or when it was built, it is most likely limited to 112 miles per hour. And if it's not, I would not take these tires over that speed. The way to check your speed rating is by looking at your tires and finding the corresponding letter and using this chart. Touring tires. Touring tires are ideal for those that want the benefits of all season tires, plus a little bit of extra handling performance. These tires also have a higher speed rating of 130 miles per hour. Summer tires. Summer tires are geared for performance in both wet and dry conditions, but are not designed for all season traction. They're primarily for warm weather and deliver excellent traction. I made a mistake saying these tires weren't good in the rain. They are. However, they are not good for cooler weather, which can cause you to lose control easily unless the tires are warmed up. For example, when it rains in Florida and the temperature drops, these tires become less effective. I would avoid using these tires in winter weather. Track tires. This partially includes drag radios as well, but we're mainly talking about track tires. 
competition or track tires are similar to street performance tires, being that they are designed to deliver amazing performance and traction off the line. These tires provide constant road contact in dry conditions, but I would not recommend using these tires on the street because if it spontaneously rains, it'd be harder to control your car. So you want to learn about Nissan engines. We're learning about cars for beginners, the VQ family. If you want a more in-depth video, check out my YouTube channel, VQ35DE. These were the first motors in the 350Z and the G35. They burn oil, but they kick out around 287 horsepower. They're good for volt-ons and people boost these, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you had forged internals. VQ35DE, rev up. Pretty much an updated DE that revs higher and produces around 300 horsepower, but they still burn oil. VQ35HR. This is the best variation of the VQ35 family. Fixed oil consumption problems, but can handle the most power. Stock, it has around 313 horsepower depending on the model that you get. VQ37VHR. This is the most powerful of the VQs. Arguably the best sounding as well. Come at your favorite motor. Car terminology for beginners. VTEC. VTEC is a kind of performance technology only used in Honda engines. Not all, but most. This allows for the car to be more fuel efficient at lower RPMs and more powerful in the higher RPMs. And it sometimes makes a distinct sound as well. Our terminology is for beginners. And we're learning about rims. All right guys, I know, and tires. And if these are helping you out, make sure you hit the follow button. This is the female special. Let's start with saying wheels instead of rims. Aftermarket wheels are not only made to make your car look better, but if chosen correctly, they will be lighter as well. Why is that beneficial? Well, it's good for fuel efficiency, but also helps with decelerating or slowing down, as well as accelerating or speeding up. Tires. Most people see tires as just maintenance, but it's way more than that. Your tires are the only thing on the vehicle that makes contact with the road. In fact, tires are so important that manufacturers put a speed limiter on your car based on the tires that it comes with. All tires come with a speed rating. Here's a chart showing that. Tires also determine the grip that your vehicle will get. Comment, I wanna learn more about tires if you wanna, you know, learn more about tires. 